Welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of One Man's Opinion, where I review professional theater. Today I am reviewing Goodspeed Musicals' world premiere new adaptation of Anne of Green Gables, with book and lyrics by Matt O'Brien, music by Matt Vinson, and directed by Jen Thompson. Based on the first book of the Anne of Green Gables series, written by Lucy Maud Montgomery, the story follows Anne, an orphan who is adopted by brother and sister Matthew and Marilla Cuthbert, played by D.C. Anderson and Sharon Catherine Brown. Things immediately go sideways as the two were expecting a boy to be delivered to them. Matthew is a bit more accepting of Anne and convinces his sister to keep her at Green Gables, their ancestral home on Prince Edward Island, Canada. Anne quickly makes friends with Diana Barry, played by Michelle Ventimilla, whose relationship becomes the crux of the story. The other important peer relationship she has is with Gilbert Blythe, played by Pierre Marais, an intelligent and rather full-of-himself boy who everyone adores, who picks on Anne throughout the story, making fun of and yanking on her red hair. This new production of Anna Green Gables has a lot going for it. It's being marketed as a folk rock musical, and Vincent's music more or less reflects that, giving an energetic score with striking key changes that will challenge any up-and-coming musical theater student. The cast is great. Juliet Redden is brilliant as Anne. She snaps Anne's witty, fast-talking dialogue like a whip at anyone who dares to challenge her intellect. And though she carries a hard-nosed sense of determination and a clear sense of right and wrong, she also has a fragile, sensitive side that comes out when her fears of being alone peak. D.C. Anderson plays Matthew Cuthbert with an endearing tenderness that is moving and inspiring. Sharon Catherine Brown portrays Marilla with a stoic, tragic atmosphere of someone who has a deeply hidden scar on her soul that she doesn't want anyone to know about. O'Brien's book and Thompson's direction definitely play the story toward Anne and Diana being romantically attached to each other, something that has been hotly debated by fans over the years. For those who support the theory of this story, this this adaptation will feel more like a romantic tragedy as Diana is firmly under the thumb of her puritanical mother, Mrs. Barry, played by Amanda Ferguson. For those who are Team Gilbert, the musical will probably be a bit of a letdown, mostly because Gilbert is fairly underutilized. His first number, Easy, sets him up as this cocky, arrogant, handsome young man whom everyone in school, even all the boys, want to love and be loved by him. He's like a teenaged Gaston whom everyone fawns over. Anne rightly has no time for his arrogant antics and challenges him. The problem here is that the plot ultimately leads to a potential romance between Gilbert and Anne, but there's no indication on Anne's side and character development that there is ever any romantic interest on her part. That is, until well into the second act, which is way too late and feels forced. If there is intended to be an actual love triangle here, building up some kind of romantic interest on Anne's part towards Gilbert earlier is necessary. Maybe something by the latter end of the first act where she acknowledges something about him that would have her consider a romance with him if he wasn't such a jerk to her. If it is the intention to ultimately make her bisexual, then give her the freedom to question it. In the novel, Anne is 11 when she is adopted. The book then travels through her childhood education, her time in college, and settling on a location for her to teach. Anne looks like she's well into high school years at the start of the musical, and the journey of the characters seem to last only a couple of years. 
The age determination affects perception of relationships between characters. There should be more definition to their ages from the beginning and the journey through time they are having. This could be better defined how the audience perceives relationships and their development. The way it currently sits, things feel really rushed, especially the last 45 minutes or so as the show's pace quickens to finish the plot. Tracy Christensen's costume design is intentionally anachronistic, at least for some of the characters, and I get the impression that the intent is to give the children in the story a contemporary look and atmosphere versus the adults, maybe to make them more relatable to a younger audience. Maybe it does, but personally it muddles the setting of the piece. I shouldn't be looking at some of the characters and what they're dressed in and think, wow, they're on Prince Edward Island in the 19th century. It's the school year, so winter isn't too far, and if that's all they're wearing, they're going to die from exposure. Though I overall enjoy Jennifer Jankuska's choreography, I feel it is a bit invasive in some of the more intimate moments, and this may play into my feelings that there aren't any feelings coming from Anne towards Gilbert. The two have a scene together in Act 2 as Gilbert rescues her from a boat that's sinking. Having the chorus dance on stage as they are sharing a private moment distracts from the intimate nature. Give the two a moment to have a breakthrough, even if it is a small one, and let Anne question it. This goes back to what I said about Anne not having any romantic feelings towards Gilbert. It's not as early as I would like, but this scene can help direct that. And the, the chorus dancing around on stage, when they're supposed to be having this first real connection, it draws away from that intimacy. Now, I know this feels like a lot of chipping away at a show I said was pretty good at the top of the review, so I'm going to stop here. Mostly because what I'm talking about, though important in helping this show develop in the future, is not so egregious that it is a bad show. It's actually really good. It's got a lot of great energy. The leads are fantastic, especially Juliet Redden. Matt Vinson's music is energetic and vibrant, and O'Brien has done a solid job of adapting a classic novel, focusing on the core love story of two girls whose lives send them into different directions. Could it be more? Yes. Could there be a little bit more development between Gilbert and Anne? Absolutely. And I hope they continue to develop this for the future, and I hope it moves on to bigger and better things. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you're interested in tickets for Anne of Green Gables, I'll leave a link in the description. You can support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Also hit the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be TheaterWorks Hartford's world premiere of the play Secondo. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.